Oh shit, we back, man. We we got we got Charleston White back in the chair, man. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Highly, highly, highly anticipated. Uh it's like people get upset when our interviews end. Yeah, yeah. You don't win got King Yeller. He Dwight Howard. We Shaq and Kobe. I'm telling you, say the Lakers wasn't shit without Shaq and Kobe no more. They think Dwight, he's he Dwight Howard. No, no, that ain't gonna work. But great interviews with him though. But no, nigga, we uh 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 you don't know what to expect from me, my nigga. And I and I don't come with a plan. I just listen to these questions and say whatever the first thing come to my mind. And usually they say the first thing on your mind is the right thing. Yeah, a lot of people think we sit up and we, you know, days before the interview, it's like I give you a list of questions. We don't, you don't do none of that. None nah, of this I, is, I, is. I never let nobody pre, I never get pre prepped. So no, there's no interview. I don't, nobody, I never know the questions, homie, because I think that takes away the element of, of the genuineness, the rawness of, of, of what you, you have to offer. So now I don't want to be prepped. I want to be ambushed with the question. Right. Now let's get right into it. I interviewed King Yella is doing great. Um, you know, personally, I like King Yella because yeah, me too. I, I, yeah, I remember where he came from. I was in Chicago when he was a drill rapper and he was trying to do his thing with Lil J. So that's why I told you last interview, like, he's about growth and development as well. The same shit you preach, he preaches in a different light. Um, but I did the interview with King Yella. He said what he said. You called the police. You know, I, yeah, I ain't, uh, I ain't, yeah, I did call the police. I just didn't get to talk to nobody. Yeah, yeah. I, I went through a whole bunch of different law enforcement agencies and, 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 and community supervised. Now, I, re I really put in some effort. Uh, to try to call somebody and talk to a probation officer. Uh, you know, uh, unbeknownst to me, uh, Las Vegas metropolitan area got several police departments. <laughs> uh, they got several uh, communities of supervision places. Uh, so I just went any, many, many mo uh, for the camera. I never uh, directly spoke to anyone. Uh, when I finally got to speak to a receptionist, which I was live. I recorded everything, so it wasn't nothing. You know, I never not call on camera, right? Uh, all the calls were made on camera intentionally. Uh, uh, when I finally got to speak with someone from the probation department, uh, she was a little baffled by, yeah, yeah, we well, all saw it. Yeah, she didn't know what the fuck to say. <laughs> Do you live here? She said, no. So she said, well, maybe you should call Crime Stoppers. So as I began to inquire, she said, well, hold on. Okay, I got him here. So what I did, I pressed mute. So could nobody get his information just in case she said information. I wanted to protect his privacy. Uh, uh, and, and come to find out, she said, well, he's not on probation. It shows here as of May of 2021, uh, he, it was completed or, or something. So obviously that's probably when he went to jail. So I took it off mute and played like she gave me some information and said, okay, yes, ma'am. Well, that information would embarrass me. Oh, he ain't even on probation and you trying to put him in jail. I said, no, I ain't gonna stop her. All that let me know is he got a parole officer. So now I'm calling him parole officer. Yeah, I'm calling the motherfucker parole officer this week. Yeah, I could. I found out he wasn't on probation last week. I'm calling a parole officer this week. What did King Yella do? What crime did he commit to go that, back he to said jail? He said he go. He said he said he go slap a disabled man. You cannot, in the United States of America, verbally say you're gonna cause bodily harm to nobody. That is against the law, especially if you are a convicted felon known gang member. You can't threaten nobody, fam. You forfeited your rights to verbally be aggressive when you're a convicted felon, when you're a gang banger. He don't know that I got my gun license to carry. The state of Nevada respects the same gun rights as Texas. Now, in Texas, they teach you in the license to carry class, the course that you take. It's an all-day course. They say body size is a factor 
and determination that you can use lethal and deadly force against somebody that's twice your body size. The law puts size. So from what I see and from what I see, he every bit of 200 and some pounds. He twice my size. His slap is a weapon. Now he just talking, making a threat. He's not thinking about a law-abiding citizen that's thinking about the law and very strategic in everything he do. He a 200-pound-plus man, known to have a probably violent history, known for probably having a convicted felon criminal record. The law is on my side no matter how disrespectful I talk. See, street people think if you hurt their feelings, they can hurt you. Street people and gangster people think if you disrespect them with your mouth, they have a legal right to cause harm to you. And that's not true at all. I can say, I can say whatever I want to say about your mama, your daughter, whatever. It's not against the law for me to provoke you. It's against the law if I commit a crime and it make you hurt me. But if I use my freedom of speech and say, hey, nigger, hey, Mexican, Hey, white boy, you can't hit me in the mouth. Hey, look at that little ugly white baby. You can't assault me for that. He said something about my baby. You can't assault me for that. But poor people and violent people think that they can. They think that they have the right to use violence whenever they feel justified. And that's, that's not true. So what he did was what I want to teach people and teach him as well you cannot premeditate violence. You cannot verbally say, I'm going to do this to somebody. You can't do that. So when you do that, me knowing what I know, we may never see each other. Me and him may never see each other. But just in case, let me let somebody know that he's threatened me. Hey, and I'm afraid. So if we ever see each other, I still got the law on my side, his body size. Who's to say once he slapped me, he's just going to slap me. He may continue on with violence. Based on his history and his criminal record, I cannot allow him to slap me with his size because he won't show mercy. So I use that against these gangster niggas. So since he want to do that and he's dumb enough to say that, then that obviously means he haven't learned anything from jail. I'm willing to do whatever, my nigga, to remain in my children's life. I'm willing to ignore a nigga that's talking on the internet. I'm willing to be a whole ass nigga and walk away from a situation that maybe make me look like a hoe so I can go home and be a father. So I want to teach him something. He haven't gotten to the point where he need to be as a father. No, nah, no, nah, fam, you don't let no nigga trick you because he called your baby ugly. This how you get a nigga if he say something to your baby. Was your baby standing right there and he's called a little ugly bitch and she heard him? If he didn't say it to your baby and he said it to you as the man, fam, ignore him. He didn't disrespect your baby. He disrespected you. Not your baby. Unless you showed the video to your baby. Now, if you showed the video to your baby, then your baby heard it. But your baby will never heard him say that. You don't think she can grow up one day and get on YouTube or TikTok and see the famous Charleston White talking down The lights down will be on? out. The world lights will be out when that baby grew up, homie. The World War IV. All kind of pandemics and war. When that three-year-old baby grow up, this shit we talk about will be irrelevant. So, wait, wait. You, you call King Yellow's daughter ugly b yeah and i called my neighbor i called my neighbor's daughter little ugly white girl too little ugly white bitch yeah we talk about kids down south huh if me and you get into it i'll talk about your yo yeah we do our cousins like that oh she done had that baby by that baby oh that baby ugly we do that i don't know where these niggas from yeah well me and you fell out you was talking you talked about my dad i was yeah, like nigga, this <laughs> you hit me below the i talked about the v v girl man listen I done heard, man, listen, this is common practice in the South. Nigga will say, nah, nanny, boo, boo, your daddy on crack. And, they, and the baby, the daddy be on crack for real. We do this as cousins. Ah, your mama, daddy just died. What? Mama, he just said, no, nah, we grew up doing this. 
So this is coming down south. Uh, What's too far, though? It ain't no too far. If me and you get into, listen, how can people be so offended by me calling his living daughter, who didn't hear me say a living bitch, a, 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 a ugly little bitch, but they so okay with Tuka being disrespected? Tuka was a kid. They so dis. Listen, homie, there, there's a, there's a, there was a one month old baby shot in the head in Chicago. How can we be so offended by a motherfucker saying that ugly little bitch, but we watch kids die by the hands of these gangbangers year after year, homie, and we never be that offended? I did an interview, and this what made me unleash on Chicago. This what made me say, I remember that was a time I just fucked with California. I wouldn't dare, I, because I had a heart for Chicago based on the principles of growth and development and Larry Hoover. So I stayed away from them out of the respect for the old man, not out of fear, out of respect for growth and development in the literature that I stole and snuck and learned as a kid. So I also people would say, well, why he ain't talking about Chicago? They killing up there too. He just fucking with California. So I done an interview about four or five months ago. Got a guy out of Chicago. I read about him, a news article where he went and picked up his daughter, took her to McDonald's. Now he had been online antagonizing people, talking shit. Yep. He had been fucking with people online. When he went and picked his daughter up, they still shot his car up. They knew, they watched him go pick his daughter up, fam. The nigga was in line at McDonald's. They shot over 30 something times in the car. He didn't, man, they hit the baby. The baby took all the bullets. The baby took all the bullets. Yep, I remember that. So the same niggas went back online and mocked the murder, tease the baby and the daddy. So all I'm doing, and I want y'all to hear me good, this is Charleston White talking on Say Cheese TV right now. All I'm doing is giving hip hop a taste of their own medicine. I'm giving them a taste of their own medicine, homie. The same way they give it to us in rap, in gangsterism, in street shit, in street codes, I'm giving it back to them by way of the internet character. And look at the backlash I'm getting. They never get this kind of backlash. So when I, when I homie, I almost cried listening to that story. Man, that night, I said, man, fuck Chicago. Fuck Chicago. Homie, if you kill a kid in this city, I'm gonna go on Facebook Live and shame your family. I'm gonna tell the people where you at. I'm gonna ride around in the area where I think you running at. You will have to kill me, nigga, in Fort Worth, Texas, if you kill a baby. I, it's, it's, you have to do that here. You have to kill me, nigga. In this city, you nigga go. Sh so when I saw that, homie, I said, nah, homie, you can't just pick one area of the United States and say you cripping blood niggas wrong and not go to Chicago and not go wherever. It's, 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 it's no. Nah. And so uh, I stopped showing favoritism. Yeah, yeah, I, I stopped showing. I used to show favoritism to Chicago, and, I, and I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, I used to show favoritism. During my interview with King Yella, uh, like I said, man, I, I, I like his growth. I like what he's doing, the transition. He, he's no, he knows that, like, rap isn't what it is. You know what I mean? A uh, very, um, very intelligent young man, homie. Uh, uh, I like him, but I don't know him. Yeah, yeah, I, I like what I hear. I like what I see. Uh, I like what you say about him. Uh, I don't know where he came from. I just know what I'm looking at. Yeah, so I go off what 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 I what I look at. Uh, and so uh, he's not presenting himself as a father, even though he put his kids in the picture every now and then. Uh, you don't see him out in the community and seeing how the community respond to him. He's online talking about entertainment shit. So in my mind, you still like the mother niggas, homie. You ain't redeemed from where you done came from. You're probably growing as an individual. But you also have a, a duty to go back and redeem and right the wrongs. And you can't do that online. You can't do that online because we've taken lives. We've, we, there's victims that lay in the way of I get right. Yeah, we done got our life right. 
Yeah, we done changed. We done found God. We done found Allah. We don't do this no more. They still hurt. Okay, you done got right. Now, how do you make your wrongs right? You just can't get right. If you done hurt people before, if you done shot up somebody's house, you have to rebuke, go against, stand against what you used to be. And I don't see these niggas do that, homie. They kind of straddle the fence. They kind of straddle the fence. You have to be totally against it. I'm totally against it. I'm so against it, I'll call the police when they break a break law. Because I want my community to be right and to do right. And I'm willing to call the police. I'm willing to be a law-abiding citizen, Sean. Huh? I'm willing to, I'm willing to release everything that I used to believe about not calling the police. Because our mothers. Our grandmothers, our children rely on the police. They can't rely on us to protect them. They can't, re they can't call us. Half the time they call us, they, our phone send them the voicemail. Because we're doing something we don't want to be disruptive doing. And it could be an emergency. That's why they got to call 911. And you want to take that from your people? Don't do wrong amongst your people. Go cross the railroad tracks and make them call the police on you. If you if you love us. You, you don't think King Yellow telling people, put the guns down, stop dissing. That you don't think that's a good start? Oh uh, that's a great that's a great start to me. Oh, uh, that's a that's a great start where? From where he used to be. Uh where though? Where where he used to be in Chicago? Yeah. He ain't in Chicago no more, right? Right. He online, right? Right. Nah. That ain't that ain't good. Cause it's a monetization online. Yeah, you getting paid to be on here. And your platform every day ain't on her saying, put the gun down. You niggas stupid, you niggas dumb. It's trending topics. It's trending topics. And remember, he turning everything to a bag. Uh, I spent 10 years not even touching the bag before I said, man, let me don't touch the bag. Because I didn't want to touch the bag off the backs of my people. I've never applied for a grant and taken a grant. I've never had a corporate donation. I've never had a corporate sponsorship. I looked to my community and said, hey, I'm having backpack school supplies. And they gave to me. So I never really needed a 501c3 nonprofit. And when I realized I don't, we just a youth outreach. And we don't ask nobody for nothing, but we do. I come online and take a break from, from trying to tell them to put the guns down. When I walk around in my community, I get my I drop my location all throughout the week, showing people where I'm at, showing the world that when you're who you are in your village, in your neighborhood, your city, ain't nobody going to kill you. I didn't say a dope for these people to recognize me. I wasn't no gang member. These people know Charleston as an adult, as a law-abiding citizen, as a kid, a juvenile delinquent. But I've never been a criminal to my people. So I don't have to move away. I can, so that's what I'm saying now, nah, homie. This is bigger than us getting online and saying, hey, y'all put the guns down. This, 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 they, nah, they not, they, the niggas with the guns really ain't listening to nobody online. They listen to you if they meet Sean Cotton in person. I done seen what killers do when you get before them, homie. They listen. Now, you want to start a, a Boy Scout snitch organization? Yeah. Yeah, I want to, I want to teach and train young boys uh, what snitching is, what telling is. And I want to create a Boy Scout organization. These niggas start telling in school. They the niggas who raise their hand and say, teacher, can I take names and tell you who talking when you leave the class? They the ones in the hallway writing down names in middle school, dropping notes to the principal, to the kids with the bloodshot red eyes that look like they on pills. 
so they can be law-abiding citizens and great neighborhood watch crime people. We need to train this. We training killers and gangsters. So we need to train, nigga, some confident, snitching, tattertelling young man that ain't scared to tell on now, motherfucker. And teach them how to fight, too. So if you fuck with them by telling, they'll kick your ass. Yeah, we need some strong snitches, nigga. And they proud of it. That way, it helped curve the violence in the communities. You got you a, you got you a snitch that know how to fight, and he'll shoot that pistol too. But he'll snitch. Who, gonna, who can beat him? Not too many people. That's who you got to put up against. That's how you combat the gang violence. That's how you combat bullying. Hey, teacher, he picking on him. Yeah, tell him in front of everybody. He make it so he'll stop. He picking, say he picking on him right now, teacher. It'll, it'll disrupt the class. Who do He here. What he doing? He just got through pinching his booty. And he told him stop. And he done it three times. No, that's how you, that's how you break this shit up. Tell on a nigga ass. Niggas damn near move out the city if everywhere he goes, hey, that's that nigga did that shooting uh, the other day at the club. Say, y'all, there he go. Say, hey, hey, how, did you shoot that nigga? How many? Yeah, you tell. And watch how many niggas not be so tough no more. The only reason most niggas are tough and so bravado and gung-ho with these guns because they have the snitch rule in effect. And I'm trying to take the snitch rule out of effect and raise proud, Honorable, tattertelling, snitching motherfuckers. <laughs> the kind, I mean, listen, the kind that'll be willing to get on the stand and tell on a nigga when they say, point him out. That's him right there, Yana. That's him. That kind. The kind like Spud Boom. When you get me, I tell on everything you don't even know nothing about. That way, you don't need so much money to get out of jail. Crime won't be so expensive if you learn to commit crime and tell on the people you commit crime with. See, there's a myth that there's honor amongst thieves. And I just want to bring everything back to how it, real, how it really is. There's no honor amongst thieves. We can't change this, people. I don't know where this last 20 year, 30 year people, group of individuals trying to come along and try to make the streets sound like it's honorable. The streets have never been honorable. You have always backbite, cross, rob. So snitching is a part of the game. You can't take that out. Most people who snitch win. You play to win, don't you? You should be playing to win. I'm going to sell all this dope. I'm going to commit all these crimes. I'm going to kill all these people. And when it's time for me to pay, hey, I, I killed with Larry, me and Sean, done something together. Now, listen, I got four more murders I'll tell y'all about, but what can y'all give me? What can y'all give me? So I'm not worried about getting in no motherfucking trouble, ever. If I want to give, I go broke again, I go back to selling dope or doing whatever because I know at least three unsolved murders from the early 90s that I can tell to get out of jail for. I was raised to just mind my business, man. I wasn't. Like, I wasn't. My mama and them were looking out the window, saying, girl, you see she got a new man. Yeah, yeah, nah, I wasn't, bro, I wasn't raised to mind my business. I heard mama, I heard grandma and them talking about the neighbors and them. They was on the phone talking about people. I wasn't raised to mind my business at all. I was raised, who done this? Okay, ain't nobody gonna say nothing. I'm whooping y'all, y'all lads. And by the time they get to me, no, nah, Mama Kevin done it. No, nah, I'm not getting no whooping because I saw how bad she was whooping his ass. I don't want to do that and I ain't done nothing, nigga. No, no, no. I was raised in a generation where niggas was cutthroat and dirty. No, man, no. Nigga, if, if we done the bank robbery, we done the bank robbery. I get caught. Y'all get away. Nigga, y'all finna go spend all the money without me. You might be taller than me. You might be a little bit more handsome than me. Man, you gonna be fucking my woman while I'm in here. One of y'all got to come go to jail with me. We, I ain't finna do this, Baba. Come on, man. One of y'all turn yourself in. I'm one of them kind of nigga. Man, I can't do this by myself. I need some company down here, nigga. I don't know nobody in this jail. Me and you can do this together.
Yeah, 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 no. Yeah, no, I done, I done been caught one time and look up and seen some nigga getting away. Hey, where y'all going? To let the police know that. Some, hey, where y'all going, nigga? I thought this is what we all do. Jail. Oh, I thought man. everybody go to jail. See, that's how I was raised. Everybody go to jail. So you tell so everybody can go to jail. And that's how you see who all damn. Yeah, who all can stay in jail. Yeah, I interviewed Lil J. Um, you gave him some quality advice. I interviewed Lil J again, you know. I he heard what the nigga said. Yeah, he seen the interview with you, and he was just like, you know, I'm going to do what I want to do. Like, this is my career. Yeah, he'll be dead next year. Yeah, he in Chicago talking like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He going to be just like everybody else. What make him think he different doing what he want to do? He don't know what to do because he don't went backwards. He came out and went backwards. He ain't moving forward. Everybody he talking about dead or successful. He ain't on the path to success because he ain't dropped a mixtape yet. He ain't streaming on no platform with no music. These interviews ain't going to get him no record deal. And ain't nobody signing no more rappers out of Chicago at the bottom. Now, if Dirk pull you up and pull you up to the top, you can get a record deal. But ain't too many people reaching from the top. Ain't too many people reaching from the top all the way down to the bottom, pulling no nigga like, like Lil' J up out and making him no star. He got to show he can make it on his own and that he got the determination and the wherewithal to make his, to make his gifts, his talents, shine past the stereotypical Chicago persona that normally is in in death or jail. So who wants to take a chance on death and jail? Oh, uh, yeah, they say a closed mouth don't get fed, but a closed mind don't either. Yeah, you know, because I, I fuck with Lil' J, but I feel like the advice you gave him, very profound. Um, but I, I personally think that he felt like, you know, he felt attacked. He felt like you was getting on to him instead of, you know, um, really listening to the message that, that you were giving. Uh, yeah, and I probably I probably came off the wrong way, and then uh, you know the character the the character that I pr portray and, and, and play on the internet. Uh, who want to take advice from that nigga? Yeah, uh, the character and the persona that I play, the role I'm playing on the internet. Who want to take advice from that nigga? Uh, and I, I get it, but. There's something in all of us, homie. I don't give a damn how dark we are in our hearts. It's a light somewhere in us. I don't care how bad we are in our ways or how evil we are in our actions. It's some goodness somewhere wrapped in that evil. The goodness always stay there so you always have a chance to come back from the things that you've done in life. That goodness in you says, you know he right. You know he right. But you can't hear that when your homeboy right here, you can't hear that when Say Cheese TV talking to you. Uh, you might be on the shitter by yourself. Might be laying down in the bed. Might be riding in the car. But at some point, homie, that goodness says, you wrong, that's right. So I don't, I, I, I say it, I, I say things it goes forth and it plant a seed. Once you hear it, it plant a seed. And I planted the seed. That's all I'm trying to do, homie. I ain't trying to stay around and see if the tree go grow. I go on. Uh, no, 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 no man who, who, who have ever planted trees got to enjoy the shade of the tree. Yeah, I'm just planting trees, homie, dropping seeds down on the ground. Uh, to these young niggas when I see something. Uh, I saw something in him, I see something in him. Uh, and so I was just getting something to him and he got it. Rather he get it, he got it. Uh, so my, my job is complete. Same with King Yellow. 
Uh, I see something in him. Uh, uh, yeah, I see something in him. I wouldn't be fucking with him if I didn't. Same with Crip Mac. Uh, I see some of these guys. Uh, so that's my way of, you know, kind of like a girl back in school. She don't know how to say I like you, so she pick on you. She kind of bully you and fuck with you. Uh, so that's all I'm doing, homie. Uh, it's a little extreme, uh, but I ain't gonna call that nigga parole officer. Uh, and if I did call his parole officer, the parole officer can't do nothing if I don't never call and press charges. Uh, so I ain't gonna press charges on that nigga. Uh, I ain't gonna call and say, hey man, I need this to be documented that he threatened me. Uh, nigga, uh, but I will act like it. Uh, yeah, yeah, and if you keep fucking with me, I keep fucking with you. If you keep fucking with me, at some point I'll talk to your parole officer. Yeah, if you keep <laughs> fucking with me, at some point I'm gonna talk to the police. I depend on how we keep doing this. But the best way to beat Charleston when Charleston fucking with you is to ignore Charleston. That's the best way to get Charleston. It's to ignore Charleston. Yeah, 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 that's the best way to beat Charleston. Uh, at, at some point, uh, I don't have anything else to do. After I say something to you, you say something to me. I ain't got nothing else to do unless you say something. If you say something, then, oh, okay, I can respond. Uh, so it becomes like playing ping pong, ping pong. Uh, you know, the most, the, the, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people, homie, uh, who I said things about and they didn't ignore the fuck out of me. And I ain't said nothing else about them no more. Yeah, yeah, I feel, I go to feeling stupid. Yeah, this motherfucker, yeah, I go to feeling stupid in the motherfucker. I go to saying something to you and you don't say nothing to me. Yeah, I feel dumb in the motherfucker. At some point, I have to admire the things in you that I'm fucking with you about. If you don't say nothing. Jay Prince, for instance. Man, man, just now saying something in years. But at some point over the years, I had to say, no, nah, nigga, I respect that nigga. No, nah, man, it's this and this. So I started highlighting the qualities or the attributes of a man that I admire. Uh, but if you respond, Kevin Gates, uh, that nigga crushed my soul. That nigga crushed my soul. Uh, me and Gates talked, what, last week? Yeah, last week. So we, we talked last week. And so the, the exchange was... Uh, yeah, the exchange that we had, uh, I had to let that nigga know, homie, you got to be a strong individual uh, to respond with positivity and positiveness when somebody's being ugly. How did that conversation happen? Uh, man, you know, I, 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 I uh, he told Rainwater to call me. Uh, when I heard the Dreka song, I was riding in the car with my homegirl. Uh, I was riding the car with my homegirl, man, and uh, when I heard the Dreka song, uh, I called Rainwater and said, say, man, uh, now these are my convictions as a man. This, this, off, the, this off camera, nobody don't know this. Uh, I'm riding the car with my homegirl, and this song is trending. I, I, it's trending like a motherfucker. So I'm listening to it. And uh, I listened to it three times, and I called Rainwater. And I said, say, man, uh, I know you're gonna be with that nigga in a couple of days, y'all going on tour. Man, tell that nigga, man, I'm sorry, homie. I ain't had no business fucking with him. You never know what people going through, uh, mainly celebrities. Uh, man, tell him I'm sorry. And I really mean this. Uh, you never know what somebody's going through, homie. So uh, to know he, he dealing with what he dealing with, no wonder the nigga, you know, so all, all this is playing in my mind. And I'm saying, man, uh, we do each other wrong as black men. Yeah, we do each other wrong, homie. We be going through shit, uh, and we don't show each other no compassion. And so these are my inner thoughts that I'm having, uh, as I'm having, uh, listening to that song. And so for him to respond to me the way he responded to me, uh, that's the that's the strength, uh, that's the peace uh, that I was someday uh, like to arrive to as a black man for my other brothers. Uh, Cause if you step on my toes, I'm gonna step back on yours, nigga. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want that to be my response. Uh, because only the only the strong can show compassion for the weak. And, and I want, I want to be strong, homie. You know it's Nipsey Hussle's trial right now, and you just said free Eric Holder. 
Yeah, free Eric Holder. Uh, we say long live King Von. Uh, we know he was a killer. Uh, we say free YSL, and they got over 25 killings, over 50 shootings, uh, all against black people. Uh, we say free uh, YMW Melly, he killed two people. And these are rappers who saying this. Uh, Eric Holder's in 23 hour lockdown. He don't get any sympathy and compassion. Uh, Eric Holder is a stepper. We normally ride with the stepper. Nip wasn't no stepper. Not only that, he killed the nigga who called him a snitch. He killed the nigga who confronted him about snitching. A ain't that the rules that they say we supposed to follow as gangsters and street guys? Nigga call you a snitch and I ain't no snitch. So nigga, he responded like the G's supposed, so why we don't want him out? Nigga, that nigga, well, he a, and he a killer. He a real stepper. Those are the people we admire and love. But because he stepped on our, one of our favorite rappers, he don't get the same embrace. And the prosecutor's office did say it was a hit. So obviously he ain't telling on nobody neither. He keeping his mouth closed. Sound like a real nigga to me. When you're looking at it from how the hip hop industry look at it. So I've been following the trial. I've been listening to the testimonials. I've even read the grand jury transcripts. The whole motherfucker. So, shit, why wouldn't we love a nigga like Eric Holder? A nigga call you a snitch. So, but because it's Nipsey, he can't get that love and that embrace. But YMW Millie, whatever the fuck his name is, hmm. I want to say to the family, I just bowed to the family. His aunt sent me a message. Not YMW Millie's aunt, the victim's family. Sent me a message several, Second, several, yeah. several months ago. Never spoke on it, never said nothing. Her words give me fuel to say the things that I say to this industry. Tuka's mama words give me the fuel to not have compassion for these niggas. Lil Snoop mom, Dobie's mother. So when the families reach out to you, homie, they're forgotten. The victims are forgotten. I ain't forgot my victim. Or they family. I learned their name, I learned his story. Yeah, when I was a kid, I ain't know nothing about it. When I grew up, I learned about Michael Levy. I learned about his wife, how he proposed two or three days before he died. I stood over and watched him die. I gave my homeboy a gun, I said, shoot that motherfucker. So I owe a debt to a soul. Yeah, I talk that shit. Yeah, we kill a white man. Yeah, 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 I talk that shit. That's a character. I think I got a debt that I pay every day for being responsible for taking somebody's life. My brother just made parole after 30 years. My interviews on Vlad TV, my interviews on Say T TV helped my brother make parole. He thought it was gonna keep him in there. Man, that nigga saying some crazy shit. But people was getting an understanding from a whole different point of view and a perspective of a killer. A kid who killed somebody. 17 year old kid, nigga been locked up 30 years, homie. He ain't complained one time. And all he had to do was 12 to 14 years. He been gone 30 years, nigga. My mama ain't cried one time. Oh, my baby been in there too long. He once did 10 years straight in 24 hour lockdown. Super sad. Mama cried to go see him. But she say, son, I ain't gonna be old coming back here to see you. So I'm telling you, homie, to see these niggas say free, uh, so I'm giving hip-hop a taste of their own medicine.
Fuck your dead homie. They do it. They used to write the names on the walls and cross them out. And the mothers drive by the store and see the name on the wall. Now they smoking tooker. So what I did, I got with FCG Giller out of New York because New York is legal in cannabis. And I say, they say, let's change the narrative. They say, man, don't do that. You jinxing yourself. Homie, our kids are killing each other, anxious to smoke each other in the pack. Why not commercialize this shit and put these niggas on these packs like the rap snacks and make it more profitable while they living? So I'm trying to change the narrative with this ugly character that I play. So that was part of my reason of, of, of staying connected to you. Uh, I told Rainwater, I said, because of Sean Cotton, I travel all around this country, homie, and kids know me. Kids, my nigga. I ain't in this for these old motherfuckers. These kids know me. High schools. Elementary schools, middle schools, dad, me and my friends watch y'all. Men, because of you, kids know me, nigga. So this ain't about the people that I hurt and offend. It's about changing this narrative that's destroying us. This gangsterism narrative. There's other things that we can become. There's other things that we desire to be. But because gangsterism, that light shines so bright. It affects all of us. It used to just shine in the street lights at night. When the lights came on, you didn't see gangsters. They only hung out on the street lights. Now they're in the sunlight. And we all striving to be like them, homie. Every kid I know. So uh, it's an ugly character that I play. And, and there's a lot of people that play a part. Uh, and helping me play this character. You get a lot of backlash for it. Uh, but you see the effects that it does for the youth. The backlash come from the grown folks, the people with other platforms. But the youth is saying, hey, 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 uh, uh, I'm that uncle that brings security to the household when you got a brother that's a gangster. I'm the uncle on the street that they know if they do a drive-by on this street, they ain't going to do now another one. I'm trying to put one of me on every street in America, homie, like a light pole. <laughs> so that's what I'm working to do, my nigga. And, and, and so uh, I, I like King Yellow. Uh, am I trying to put him in jail? Fuck no. Fuck no, I'm not. Uh, am I trying to talk directly to his probation officer? No, not. But I call and act like I am just to fuck with them white folks and get them something to talk about too. Yeah, I, I, I play too. I go overboard. Yeah, I don't know how to play well with others. So, yeah, fuck it. Let's keep it going. Uh, Kodak Black, he, he recently just said it and it went viral this past weekend. He says, any rapper or celebrity who doesn't go back to their hood is scared. Do you agree or disagree? I disagree. Uh, a prophet is not welcome in his own hometown. That's a scripture that I was told. Uh, why would you go back somewhere where they hoping you fall? They wishing you fail. Why would you go back somewhere uh, where they constantly want to remind you of who you used to be? Man, I remember when you used to, yeah, man, all right, say nephew, boy, you done got rich now, you done forgot about it, man, boy, say boy, you done got up there. Why would you want to go back to that? Mm. The, the the place where you from, always remember places where you from. Y'all don't clap for the niggas where they from to get them where they going. Mm. The people where you from, they don't clap for you to help you get to where you trying to go. So once you get to where you trying to go, why the fuck you need to go back there so your wings could get clipped? Mm. Them people back there feel like you owe them something and they ain't done nothing for you. So now nah, don't don't let don't let a young minded young man distort the path of progress. You help as you grow. You help as you cross paths. But you don't have to retract where you're from 
and go help where you're from. You're not obligated. Because they didn't help you get here, homie. Now, if they help you got here, God damn it, you got to go back. The teacher that was in school that told you you was this and it brought it out of you, you got to go back. The football coach, the little league organizations, the 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 you got to go get back to them if you play little league football. If you play middle school basketball, you got to go to that school and say, man, I went here and blessed that. That's what you're obligated to go back along the path that you've taken. But your neighborhood, no, nah, most of them talked about your mama. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, most of them said you wasn't going to be nothing. Mm. So why would you go back and sit at their feet? They were used as your footstools, as your stepping stones. They've already played their part, so you don't have to go back. Yeah, I see a lot of rappers that, uh, I mean, Kodak said it, but a lot of rappers, they preach that on a daily that, you know, you're not good in your hood or it, it, it's just this daily reminder that that your hometown, wherever you're from, you got to go back there from time to time. Well, well, it, it's like the, it's, it's, it's the, it's, that's the process of bondage. There's nothing good where you come from. So why do I have to come back to where there's nothing good at? Just to come check in and do what? Prove to you that I'm still willing to fail by being here with you guys? Prove to you that I'm willing to die? Risking one of you niggas robbing me because I'm a good lick? When I come here, everybody's go play on me. When I come here, everybody wants something from me. Mm, yep. If I fall and have to come back here, they go shit on me. So why in the hood, after I make it out, I got to come back and prove I'm good? I was good enough to make it out, nigga. Now you show me you good enough to meet me out here. Why I got to come back down there? Matter of fact, let me bring y'all up here, homie. Let me bring y'all out the hood up here so y'all can see what it look like up here. Why do I have to come back so I can show y'all I'm good in the hood when y'all ain't good in the hood? Y'all struggling. You still mad at niggas that done something 20 years ago to you. So now, nah, fam, that's where they tricking us at. I was talking to, a, I met a, a Hispanic guy, and he said, man, we got to go back to California, man, and check in. If not, we get DP. We can't stay gone long. Homie, you move away, get a family, do good. I got to come back and check. When do the hood let me go? When do this motherfucking shit let me go, my nigga? When I grow up, I find a wife, I have kids. I get a job. Can I go now? Am I still beholden to the street rules? Homie, mm. somebody broke into my car. I can't call the police. I, and I know who done it. I can't get my insurance. They want to know if I got a police report, homie. I can't call the police. Man, they said you called a cop, man. Homie, <laughs> I couldn't have got my insurance. My daughter was raped. And they said she was at this party over here. I got to go kill them niggas, homie. I can't let the law do their job so I can make sure my daughter's okay, get her the counseling she needs so I can stay here and help her heal this pain, or do I have to go kill them niggas and leave my daughter out here with the pain? But I get to, I get to be a daddy from prison, though. I can write her letters. When do the hood let the black boy go from the rules? The, the codes, the ethics, that's bondage. That's a chain on my neck. It's I can only go so far because I got to go check back. So I ask these niggas, homie, when do I get to grow up? When do I get to be a regular man? When do I get to bow my knees before God and say, God, I want to just serve you. I want to be right with you, God. I don't want to meet these men's rules no more. 
do I have to abandon the who? Am I always bound to the hood? Am I always bound to these street rules? How do I get free so I can free my family? I don't know, homie. I, how do we get free? Um, Young Thug recently freestyled from jail. And uh, he begged God for a second chance. He don't need a oh, now. Nah, don't talk to God now, motherfucker. No, you a killer in the punk. You were dreaded in kill, nigga. You double trouble for God. Yeah, yeah, you a double dose of trouble for God, nigga. You put on a dress, wear a fingernail poly, and you a bang, bang, bang a nigga's ass up too with them thukas. Boy, God can't do too much with you. You got to go to jail. Oh, yeah, yeah, now, nah, man. You, yeah, yeah, you double dose of trouble for the good Lord. Yeah, no, yeah, no, nah, man. You, yeah, no. Nah. Uh, I, I, listen. The boy was sounding like this was his first time rapping. Did you hear it? He was stumbling yeah. over the words. He yeah. couldn't get it out. He didn't sound confident. None of that shit. He sounded like he was at a talent show. And, you know, somebody talked him up and said, hey, you know, you can, man, I think you can rap. And he didn't believe in himself rapping. That's how he sounded to me. But then he went to talking about the police do this and the police do that. And, and I'm saying, no. Nah, I think the boy having a mental breakdown. Yeah, yeah, the boy crying out for a psychiatrist, sound like to me. Yeah, 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 tough motherfucker. Talking out there, I don't get these niggas. Say, boy, listen, the shit he going through, I went through it as a little bitty boy, locked in them motherfucking cells, one hour a day. Learn to jack off, nigga. Yeah, yeah, learn to jack off seven times a day, find you some good jack off time, and buy everybody commissary. Yeah, yeah, buy, buy, buy everybody commissary and start having some motherfucking talent show. Find you one, find, I bet it's a nigga that can tap dance. That's another motherfucking Sam and David Jr. nigga <laughs> that can rap and tap dance. That nigga, uh, Ty Harris playing the piano with the opera shit. Get us a tap dance and rapping nigga uh, and watch what you do. So no, don't, don't be down there stressing nigga. Be a talent scout in jail. And God damn it, it'll make it easy. Yeah, yeah, all that goddamn money you got, be a talent scout and, and listen. Fuck a Chanel bike. Nigga talking about I'm dreaming of this is me and my daughter on Rodeo Drive on a Chanel bike. Fuck it, he thinking about that for in jail. Yeah, nigga. Say, say, boy, these new gangsters is a motherfucker. No, no, oh, no, man. no. He to be down there. This is the time to solidify who he is with that gangster shit. Yeah, yeah, now nah, don't be talking about fuck God, nigga. My brother just now starting to holler God. It took him 30 years. I used to tell the nigga, say, you ain't never getting out. Yeah, I ain't bullshit. I used to tell the nigga, nigga, you ain't never, man. God ain't gonna never let you out of prison, nigga. Uh, cause he wasn't talking like another nigga's talking. Shit, boy, after 30 years, that nigga got that bald spot. He got all them gray whiskers up under his beard. Uh, that nigga used to be my color. That nigga light yellow now, cause he don't get a lot of sunlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he done reversed to being the little brother. I'm the big brother now. It took him 30 years to get to this position. Thug won out, he ain't even been gone two months yet. I'm almost willing to bet. I'm almost willing to bet with any rapper, if they keep young thug ass locked up six more months in the conditions he in, he'll tell to get out of jail too. They keep him six more months locked up in them conditions like that there. He'll tell to get out of jail too. He about ready to break. You can hear it in his voice. You don't never see the Italian gangsters doing no shit like that. Calling home, singing and making songs. Uh, yeah, rapping for the free world. Yeah, nigga ain't get nine dollar. This multi-millionaire nigga done gave us a free rap. Boy, normally we couldn't have got that. That's why I recommend jail, I'm telling you. Yeah, why I recommend it. He doing shit he ain't never done before. He rap sober. And listen how he sound rapping sober. He so he sounds so good. He wasn't hurt nobody or none of that in them songs. He would gave reference to the Lord. He even talked about being a father, spending time with his daughter. See how jail do a nigga's ass? It sober you up, and you come with good raps, good positive rap. Matter of fact, then with Disney raps. Yeah, that was a Disney rap. <laughs> On some real shit, though, Young Thug, he, he takes care of a lot of people, though. There's I don't give a damn, he kill a lot of people, too. The devil take care of people. 
you can't take care of and kill. You can't be over here taking care of the people you love and over here telling people, man, y'all ain't killed them niggas yet. Oh, y'all getting soft. You, you can't do that, homie. You making other people mamas cry. And who you taking care of? Your people. But in the process of taking care of your people, some of them got to crash out for you. You ain't going to go spin with these niggas. A real general get in the car. Real general get in the car and show you how to do it. Come on, nigga. Yeah, we gonna go kill together, nigga. But the nigga that's sitting back with the millions, taking care of people, he taking care of people in the name of killing. He ain't taking care of people in the name of love. He taking care of people in the name of killing. So then you get this record label executive, Kevin Lyles or whatever he is. He a part of an industry that promotes detriment, murder, destruction, and genocide to a race of people for over three decades. And he's been the face and the hands and in the heart of this shit. And now you want to come down off your high horse come to an all-black town like Atlanta where everybody know what's going on. Everybody know what's going on. Everybody know he called hits. Everybody know that nigga really about this shit. Y'all think these people don't know this? They kids know it. They nephews know it. They listen to it. It's the talk of hip-hop that he really lived like this. So here you come, Kevin Lyles. You want to come in the court and cry to us like this is a decent, upstanding citizen and he needs to be released and y'all willing to put up all this money for a man who promotes the killing, who glorifies the destruction, who propagates genocide and murder to black youth. You want him free? Nigga, take them three, four million you willing to put up for him and invested into a gun violence program, a gun violence curriculum, a financial literacy curriculum, a credit awareness program. But don't put it behind this rapper when we all know from when he was shooting up Lil Wayne ass, from when he was shooting up Lil Wayne ass to now, this nigga here is a violent dress wearing motherfucker. So let him do what all we had to do. Exactly, we had to pay our dues. He just paying dues. So y'all get out the way of this man paying dues. He got all them millions. He got to pay dues for it. He ain't paid dues yet. Because if he paid dues, then he'll sit back and go through what he going through and wait to come out on the other side because you got to go through what you got to grow, go through to get to where you need to be. He, he, he think he where he need to, where he, he where he want to be right now as a millionaire rapper. Now nah, he got to get to where he need to be. So he in the process of getting to where he need to be. So everybody get out the way. He'll get there. Now you also spoke to Meek Mill too. Uh, you had something to say to him. Meek Mill said it's not humane uh, through the conditions of what Young Thug is going It ain't right. humane for them niggas to promote all this goddamn killing to niggas. That's so goddamn, in rap music is inhumane. When did them niggas start thinking about humanity? When did rappers with all these guns and killing and bitch this, drank this, pour water on the whole head, pour shampoo, champagne in the bitch's eye, pour beer down her pussy? When did these niggas start being humane? When did YSL wasn't humane? They putting hits on niggas' ass in jail. Why do people want to be humane all of a sudden? Nigga, 23-hour lockdown is not inhumane. He a lying motherfucker. That's where you need to be so you can find yourself. When did these rapping niggas, man, I don't, I don't get Meek Mills, homie. I don't get these niggas. They want all the protection, leniency, compassion, and mercy for them, but you don't never hear them talk that shit for us. And they the ones rapping this shit to us. 
telling us what to do, how to kill the nigga, what guns to use, whoop de woo. Yeah, man. So, uh, it costs to be the boss. So shit, nigga. Let the boss cover the cost. He can handle it. He was the boss, remember? Yeah. Um, now my guy Batman Kevo, uh, he's been going viral for the last two, three weeks. He um, got that booty butt lift on the belly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he got that booty butt lift on the belly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boy, I knew these niggas been cheating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasting his motherfucking money. Yeah, I would have I would have pumped that, I would have pumped that that I would have pumped that fat into that dick. Yeah, yeah, they say you can have a dick transplant. Uh yeah, yeah, now nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pump them that six pack. Yeah, I'm gonna put 12 inches on that dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck a six pack, nigga. I know, man, yeah. I knew he was bad built. I'm the one told him he was bad built. I'm the one helped. I'm I was the inspiration for Band Man Kiwi to get the uh, the the booty butt lift on on his belly. Yeah, yeah, I'm the inspiration for that. I, I'm I'm the one broke him down and told him, nigga, them them motherfucking Gucci's and Balenciaga clothes is made for a slim nigga like me. Yeah, yeah, he he knew he had to go get him one of them little bitty bodies. <laughs> <laughs> He knew he had to go get him Yo, one of them little bitty bodies. I, I, I fuck with Ben, man. Uh, he he t he well, he told me before he was gonna do it because we scheduled an interview like a year ago, and he was like, "Man, I'm sore right now." But he told me he did it. But like he said, all the celebrities do it. I ain't. I, I heard all the celebrities play. I do a whole bunch of things. I heard <laughs> all the celebrities when they get that money, they go to doing all kind of things. Yeah, yeah, they go to saying regular sex ain't regular sex no more. Uh, niggas start wanting to go to the moon. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Niggas start uh, growing hair that can't grow. No, all kind of shit go to happening. But what I'm not go do. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. Yeah, no. Uh, what happened to the man? What happened to the man that when he go ball, he just go ball? George Jefferson. Remember how George Jefferson had a ball spot right there? He didn't try to go no her. What happened to the man where when he get a belly, he just a big, big belly motherfucker? <laughs> and he mean with the big belly. What happened to that man that's satisfied with growing old, getting fat, and dying? What happened to them men? Now, nah, man, uh, only thing I want is a larger penis. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I could, yeah, if I could, yeah, if I can get the porno guy's penis, I would be all right. But I don't want the, I want the six pack in the muscle. And if I can get muscles pumped into me, I would. But I ain't. Yeah, cause I don't want that shit, man. Yeah, I'm satisfied with being, uh, what I'm aging to be. Uh, who I am as a man make me walk around, uh, with my head held high. Uh, my confidence come from, uh. My confidence comes from when I walk away from the mirror, the things that I tell myself in that mirror. Uh, Y'all looking at a little old bitty skinny nigga. Uh, I'm looking at a nigga with a six pack like Band Man Kiwi, naturally. Yeah, so oh yeah, so my confidence is called self confidence. And I think once a nigga go to cutting on his body, uh, you know, doing squats so his booty get a little bit more firmer, uh, you know, uh, you know, those are s s self esteem issues. I think I, I think our focus should be wanting to be healthy. Uh, wanting to be healthy, uh, having a, 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 a peace of mind, uh, uh, comfortable in our identity as men. Uh, when we start, you know, next thing you know, these niggas go be wanting the voluptuous lips. You know, so they can, you know, the LL Cool J lips. Uh, <laughs> you know, all that kind of shit. But no, nah, man, shout out to Band Man Keep It though, man. Uh, it look good too, boy. It don't look like yours, cause I know what she used to look like. Whoever stomach that is, you got them people stomach look good on you, boy. Cause that ain't you, nigga. <laughs> I, I think I think now men are trying to keep up with the women, and what I mean by that is you see thirty five year old, forty year old women getting the BBLs now. They're getting all this shit, and the men don't want to be left behind. They yeah, next be thing, next next thing you know, they go be want to be penetrated like a woman. Yeah, next thing you know, men go want to know what it feel like to be penetrated. So mm. slow down, fellas. Don't be trying to keep up with the women now. Yeah, before you know it, you going to be wanting somebody uh, to make you more. See if you can get wet. So don't be trying to keep up with <laughs> these goddamn women. Nigga, what are you talking about?
So no, uh, some days don't bathe. Yeah, just be a man, nigga. Be musty. Men got a smell to them. Yeah, just some days don't bathe. Nigga, don't be trying to bathe every day. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, so now trying to keep up with the women is what make little boy wear mama shoes. After you done seen mama got dressed, getting ready for the, you know, for a party. Uh, I think that's what's happening right now. I think you did hit it on the head, my nigga. I think we are really competing with women as men. Mm. Yeah, I think I think somehow, some way, uh, we've unintentionally uh, created this gender war between us and women, homie. And and we competing. Uh, I think the woman competing to be the masculine and the strongest, and the man competing with harder show uh, he can uh, be just as pretty as she is. Yeah. Uh, since last time we talked, uh, trouble. Atlanta rapper Trouble, uh, he was killed. He was yeah. seeing this woman. He was sleeping in her bed. And I think the ex the ex boyfriend came in. My kind of nigga. And, and, and he killed Trouble. Yeah, my kind of nigga. Who, Trouble or the or the ex boyfriend? The nigga. Yeah, the nigga that killed Trouble. Nigga catch you in the bed with his bitch. Now normally you supposed to get on that bitch ass. Wait, wait, wait. That's the that's the ex he's the ex though. I don't give a damn. That's how I weigh my bitch. Yeah, when I get through with a bitch, nigga, that ain't your bitch no more. You better wait 10 years and I'm done fucking with her for you lay comfortable laying with that bitch. She telling you all oh, this here, but she still answering my call. Hell you talking about? Yeah, she telling you one thing, nigga, but Shay, no, nah, no, nah, we, we still, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, uh-uh. You don't uh -uh. think that's the woman's fault? That's the, you don't think that's the, that's the woman's fault, though? Uh... It's everybody's fault. Yes, yeah, it's, it's everybody's fault, homie. Uh, it's the element of the woman's. Uh, that's just if we go be real. Because you know this nigga a goddamn fool. According to the, the, the records, this, this nigga here that killed is a goddamn fool. You already know you, you done fuck with a goddamn fool. So, me being the kind of nigga I am, if I was trouble, I think I'm a hell of a nigga, and I'm a bad nigga. I'm a trouble nigga, so fuck that nigga. He ain't go fuck with me. We saw this in the BMF series between Meech and, 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 and the guy in that series, right? Uh, I, I'm trying to pick my words very carefully out, out, of, out of respect for trouble. Not trouble, but the man who died. I don't know his name, but the man who died, uh, who left behind a legacy as a rapper. Uh, I'm gonna speak on trouble, but right now I'm addressing the man who died. Uh, my mother always tell me, homie, uh, you responsible for knowing who you laying with. Every aspect of that person. When you go over this broad house, nigga, and you go to sleep, Shit, you don't know what or who go kick that door in behind this pussy. Y'all, yeah, that's my, yeah, that's my, yeah, that's my, that's my old dude. Oh, oh, okay. Come over here, baby. I know that nigga still in the picture. How long y'all been broke up? Oh, about a year. He's still lurking. Especially if you look how you look. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, you, yeah, so, no. Nah, uh, so our cockiness, uh, our bravadoness. Uh, even mine, uh, if not check, will be a downfall. Uh, because you start taking everything lightly. Uh, yeah, you start taking everything lightly. Niggas say, man, nigga ain't supposed to say nothing to the bitch. Nigga ain't supposed to say nothing to the nigga. Nigga supposed to say something to the bitch. You don't get to dictate, nigga, my love. Yeah, you don't don't nobody get to dictate my love. And 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 and, and, and a lot of people uh, love is dangerous. So it ain't even worth loving them. So he dies. A lot of people blame the girl. Uh it's not her fault. But when you're in a love triangle, when you in you 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 in a 
sexual relationship and there's more than one person involved, uh, there's always that component that one of us may lose our life because a motherfucker reacting out of their feelings. Mm. Uh, I saw the hip hop community's response to trouble. Saw a lot of tears. I saw a lot of people in pain. I saw, uh, saw a lot of people mourning. Uh, a lot of people celebrated his life. Uh, a lot of people proud of where he came from and uh, where he ended up prior to dying, uh, who, who he became. Uh, that's admirable. The, the sad part is we only do this for rappers. Uh, the components that, that make my heart cry is when we bury this black man, And before the world, we see, we see look like we burying a blood member, like we burying a gang banger. All the red bandanas, all the representation of the culture. Man, it's my last days on earth, my nigga. I'm on my way to go meet a God. I'm on my way to go enter into eternal life. And this the last representation of my days. All these red bandanas over my casket. All these street niggas. This, this image will forever be implanted into the minds of young people. I want that kind of, I want that kind of funeral. That looks honorable. When I look at that funeral, I said, man, they make dying look good. They make being killed look good. Even if you don't get to live. Even if you ain't live right. Even, they just make dying look cool. So I understand why the young niggas want to die. Because in their mind, I get that kind of funeral. Not knowing they don't get it. They make prison. See, when I saw that, that when I saw his funeral, I say they make prison look the same way. When you look at the guys in prison, when they take their pictures, I once saw a picture with niggas from Fort Worth. Uh, shout out to Rios, a uh, nigga from the South Side. Uh, big time nigga out the city. When he went to the feds, he wasn't the only niggas I ever seen with a picture with Big Meech. Him and Big Meech standing toe to toe, shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow the bravado this of that picture. When you look at the other prison pictures, the big poses, the, the body postures, the, the unification of all the black brothers in one picture, boy, they make prison, prison pictures make you want to go to prison. It look, oh man, I, I want to be that. Uh, it saddens me to see that, homie. Nigga mama there, nigga grandmama there, nigga daughters there. Uh, but what's happening is there's not a lot of old people in our families anymore. So we free for all. Uh, there's no way you could come to my funeral if I was dead and my mother's still alive, my grandmother's still alive, and you got bandanas on your head, bandanas at your pockets. You won't even come to the church. My mother and them go check that at the door. You're not fit to represent this here. You go have your own funeral without his body. But you're not going to do this before the family who don't, who don't, they're not in agreement with that. So you're going to bring this to my death. So yeah, nah, homie, uh, I don't know trouble. Never heard of him before now. Never heard his music. Don't know nothing about him. I don't know nothing about Atlanta rappers, really, if they're not big, 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 big like Jeezy and them. So I don't know nothing about him. So it was even, man, fuck, that's just another dead-ass rapper. Nigga died fucking with a nigga bitch. Was my take on it. Then you start hearing the testimonials about who he is. And what people say about him, the man, makes you want to go learn about the man and find out how he died, uh, you know. Uh, so 
that's that's kind of like a, a a homework task that I'm I I done assigned to myself uh, to go find out who he is. Now every rapper that Soldier Boy had beef with over the past two three years all passed away. Young Dolph, Draco the Ruler, uh, Trouble. Um, Soldier Boy spoke out on that after Trouble passed. Everybody that he went he's gotten to it with. He went. He he replied. Well, he spoke out after all of them died. He said, "You went out like hoes. My ops don't exist no more." So basically, to paraphrase it again, every rapper who has had something bad to say about Soldier Boy are no longer here. I ain't. I fuck Soldier Boy, nigga. Uh, Crunchy Black said he was a punk. Yeah, Crunchy Black still here. Yeah, yeah, my nigga Country Black talk real bad about that nigga. Let, man, listen. I want to remind Soldier Boy. You ain't got no motherfucking ops, nigga. And watch them you, and watch them you. <laughs> Remember, you was on your tiptoe, nigga. Remember, you was a tiptoeing nigga ass. <laughs> nigga, yeah, nigga, you ain't got no motherfucking ops, nigga. Nothing about you was street. Let's, let's go back over your career, nigga. You got rap rivalries. You ain't got no opposition, nigga. Y'all ain't boom, 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 boom. You shot at some niggas that broke into your house. Anybody? No, 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 no. That's, that's a gimme. Yeah, yeah, that's a gimme. Uh, nigga, you went to California and became a blood. How are you anything, nigga? And we all know you were paying for protection. Because you can't go be no blood how you were doing without paying them niggas. You had go yayo them in your house. You had Lil Dirk them in your house. Uh... No, nah, my nigga, you ain't none of what you professing to be, soldier boy, grown ass man, soldier boy, grown ass man, soldier boy. You ain't none of that, homie. So let me help you understand. Let me give you some insight on what done happened to all your ops. They done done something you can't do yet, nigga. They done died. No, nah, they done done something you a coward to. Nah, nigga, them niggas done face some shit, nigga. Me and you don't know if we can stand up under it. How you clapping? And you ain't, you ain't, you ain't been, them niggas battle tested. You ain't battle tested, soldier. To get to where them niggas go, nigga, to talk how you talking, you got to die. Cause guess what? You wasn't a killer or now, nigga. So you can't, you can't pop your collar, you can't toot your horn, you can't pat your ass, nigga. You ain't threw a punch at them niggas. You ain't known for being gangster. You can't, you can't get to where you at now, nigga, and get gangster when you came out you and You ain't got no juvenile history. You ain't got no nigga. You got a cocaine history. You got a, 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 a sex history where who you done fuck. But nigga, you ain't got no history and credibility of being no certified G nigga where you can clap for four dead niggas being gone like they really opposed you. No, no, no. Them, them from, from what I heard and from what I see, soldier, uh, them niggas everything you trying to be. From Trouble to Dolph to Draco, them was real street niggas who had real prints that they left in the streets. Real concrete, uh, fossilized dinosaur feet in the street, nigga. You been on your toes in the industry. It's, it's, it's a big difference, son. It's a big, big difference, boy. So, uh, Let's see if you can stand up on the death, nigga, and see what they say about you after you die. Until then, you can't talk, nigga. No, no, you got to die, nigga, to speak on them niggas and say, oh, they're my ops, and woo, woo, woo. No, man, them niggas done, them niggas done met death. So you can't say, oh, my ops gone. When I'm your op, nigga. No, I'm your op. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm your op, too. Yeah, I think you a weenie. Yeah, nigga, I think you a weenie. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, nah, man, that nigga, uh, uh, for him to come out and say that afterwards, and when them niggas was alive, he wasn't making no attempts to cross paths with them niggas. Uh, yeah, that nigga a goofball. In real life, he a goofball. Yeah, motherfucking internet kid. 
I'm glad you don't play like that, Say Cheese TV. Yeah, I'm glad you, yeah, my nigga got on MySpace and became a millionaire. Yeah, he ain't trying to be gangsta. This fool ass nigga went and joined, what he became, the Brims in California or some kind of blood gang? <laughs> yeah, nigga, fuck you. You lost credibility when you started hollering blood. Uh, you hip to Queso, the Jacksonville rapper who, him and his dad are in jail for murder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, his dad is testifying against him in court. Queso has Queso and, and Julio Fulio are rivals, and um, you know Queso went to jail for a murder. His I think his dad was allegedly the getaway driver. His dad is testifying against him in court against his own son in court because he feels like he's better off outside of prison because he could help his son. He could be a better father outside of prison. You damn lot, nigga. We daddy, we better together than cellmates. No, daddy, don't go. Please, daddy, don't leave me. No, hell no, nigga. Okay, he wanna testify against me. I wanna testify against him. Yeah, yeah, I wanna testify against him then. Nigga, nigga wanna tell on me. I wanna tell on him then. what he do? He drove the car. Yeah, he knew we would go do this. Now, daddy been in on all the gangster shit I've been doing. No, daddy, don't jump out the boat now. You been we've been down together this long, daddy. Don't let the white come on, daddy. Where you going? Your daddy wrong in the motherfucker, homie. He the getaway driver. So obviously he's saying, come on, nigga, let's go do this, son. You supposed to stop him for now, my nigga. So we here, we looking at each other. Hey, son, just go on and take the case. <laughs> <laughs> Say, come on, daddy, don't do, come on, you bullshit nation. Nigga, yeah, you daddy, listen, I was looking for you to stop me, daddy. You should have been daddy. You should have talked me out of it. Well, son, you act like you want daddy, but you know I ain't no killer. So ride it out with me. We might can beat it. So, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a fucked up daddy, homie. You drove the car for your boy to go kill somebody. You drove the car, my nigga. And now you go hand him over? You took him to go commit the crime. And now you go hand him over. Man, I got a homeboy. He stabbed his next door neighbor 93 times when he was 12 years old. Little white girl. He stabbed her 93 times. After he got through stabbing her, he drug the body through the house. He was 12 years old when he done this. He put her up against the back of the fence, laid her down with her feet against the fence, and he stacked firewood on top of her to hide the body. He did this in 1988. When his daddy went out there to find a, get some firewood and discovered the body, his daddy tried to take the charge. His daddy wasn't even at home when he killed him. His daddy, and I hate to talk about this, his daddy was very abusive toward him. So, of course, dad know the abuse that he had been inflicting upon his son. So to see this human body like this was pretty violent for a 12-year-old kid to display this kind of violent behavior. Dad tried to take the case, but they know Dad didn't do it. The real nature of a father is to get in front of the son, not to put the son in front of him. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, Uh, I don't, uh, yeah, now nah, that hurt, homie. Yeah, that hurt to think that a father would hand his son over after handing his son over because he took him to the crime, so he actually handed his son over. I wanted to get in there to hand him over. Uh, how can you be a better father now? How can I be a better father now if I tell on my son? What makes me a great father is that when this kid look at me with his eyes, he believe in me. 
if I cause this kid not to believe in me, then when he look at me, that's a glare of disappointment. That's a glare of shame. Sometimes he may even feel betrayed because I've disappointed him as his father. Why would you want your son to continue to look at you if that's the case? And you can't never win back that glare of admiration. That's what you live for, my nigga. Son, look at you, boy. You look in his eye, boy. He think you're a superhero. Boy, he think you're the coolest motherfucker in the world. Man, if I lose that, I'll die. So uh, I say to his father, uh, shame on you. Yeah, shame on you. Uh, the number of Americans who believe in God has dropped to the lowest number in 80 years. Yeah, them dope new- fiend babies. Yeah, yeah, them dope fiend babies, uh, them pill popping hoe babies, uh, them hoe mama kids, uh, them the niggas didn't have the grandmamas, took them to church. Uh, they didn't pray when breakfast was made. They didn't sit at the table with their cousins and their other relatives and, you know, mama, grandmama, muddy uh, made them, you know, pray over their food. These other niggas never been on their knees and had to learn the Lord's Prayer. Uh, these are the people that get in trouble. And when they go to court and look back in the court seats, ain't nobody there. These are the people that go to jail. When they go to jail, most people are happy they in jail. So uh, your God is the base of, of your home life. So that just goes to show you, man, most of American homes are fucked up. How you not go believe in God? You ain't got to believe in Allah. You ain't got to believe in Buddhists. You got to believe in some kind of God. God, man, especially if you're black. You know, I'm just saying, uh, but uh, there's always been some kind of higher power uh, to exist in the minds and in, in the hearts of, of American people. Uh, that's why, this, that's why uh, that's been our moral compass. That's been the morality of who, who we've been as a, as, a, as a group of people, as a group of individuals. Uh, different ethnicities, different races, to be able to coexist uh, in this country with, with, with all the resources, with all the privileges, with all the benefits, with all the rights, uh, and we not be savagery. We not be a third world country uh, because of our beliefs in our, in, in our God. So I kind of understand why uh, we see the things that we see in today's time. These people don't have a God. Uh, a, a, a lot of what we, a, a lot of what we see uh, today in young people. Uh, if young people don't believe in God, then their only hope only comes from what they can see. It ain't the unseen because they don't believe in the unseen. Uh, when they go to jail and you don't know God, fuck you grab. You, if you got to try to, life becomes about emotions and feelings rather than having faith that gives you the strength to endure those uncomfortable emotions, suicide, depression, hurt, anger, toxic love, uh, hopelessness, uh, born into a condition, born into a situation where all your life you hurt, all your life you abused. If you never get introduced to a higher power, let's just take the word God out of it. A a, a a higher power, a, a higher being, a, a higher calling. We as humans, we have to believe in something greater than us. Or else we'll suffer greatly, homie. 
not necessarily physically, not necessarily financially, but your emotional and mental capacity, homie, would be shot to shit if you don't have nothing beyond your understanding to reach for and try to hold on to, whether it's true or not. You need it for your own sake. So. Mm. Uh, Baltimore rapper by the name of Young Moose, he recently won a $300,000 uh, lawsuit because they planted crack on him back in 2012. If he don't leave the city, they go really frame him. If he don't get the fuck away from Baltimore. And you recently went there not too long ago. Yeah. So you know yeah. what it's like out there. Yeah, yeah. And 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 shout out to my Baltimore guy that 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 I can call anytime and he give me jobs to put on my YouTube channel for Baltimore. So I'm connected to the city of Baltimore, working with the city of Baltimore that helps me. I help him get jobs and he helped me help the people that I fuck with out of Baltimore. But uh, no, nah, fam, uh, $300,000, uh, I would take 100000 and put it somewhere where I couldn't touch it. Where if I fuck off 200000 I got that 100000 to to rebuild off of. Uh, uh, but, Going forward, and I hope this young brother hear me, nigga, they want they lick back. You just didn't win $300,000. You cost them millions because now they're for to have to overturn. Now they for to have to look into every case whoever these people was involved in, from the prosecutor, the police that was involved in this case, they got to go back and look at all their cases now. Yep. So nigga, you won way more than 300,000. So now what you have on your back is a target. You better not do nothing wrong. You better pay your taxes. Uh, nigga, they on your ass. They don't like to lose. And they sure don't like to lose where they've been caught cheating. And you got some money. They'll put together a hit squad for you. So pull back. Don't, don't antagonize online with the nan nanny boo boo yeah woo 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 woo. Uh, buy out gracefully. They'll let you buy out gracefully. But you better not act like you trying to uh, stick your chest out. You better not act like you trying to be uh, the only nigga to beat them. Because then they go come after you. But they'll forever watch you. Uh, because this is something unprecedented that we see today. Uh, and you cost him a lot of money. You think he should keep rapping or he should move on to something else? He should move on to something else. Because he go blow the money rapping. Yeah, yeah, he go blow the money rapping trying to keep up and, and project the rap image lifestyle. Mm, uh, I agree. Uh, at, at this point now, nigga, uh, you got to take on revolution. Uh, you didn't pick it, it picked you. Anything else outside of that, you lose. Unless you play square working man. But if you try to stay in this limelight, yeah, you lose. They ain't gonna let him win, homie, and, and keep the light. The niggas who got the light ain't really winning financially. That's why Jay-Z ain't before this motherfucker. That's why Nas ain't out front. That's why you don't see Akon out. The niggas who, who, who really get the light, they trying to get the money. Nigga, when you get the money, you don't get to keep the light too now. So you got to figure out which one is more important. Uh, nigga, when I get the money, I ain't going to be trying to get, I ain't going to be in front of the lights. Because that make me a target. Uh, so, nah, homie, when you get a lot of money like that, you're supposed to unplug from everything you know 
for about 30 days and go somewhere by yourself and think. And, and, and within that 30 days by yourself trying to figure this shit out, what I'm going to do with all this money, uh, the people who you're really supposed to help will, will appear in a vision. Uh, the things that you're supposed to do will come to you in a dream. But if you get all this money, you got everybody around, you got everybody around, you got the lights, the action, the noise, the women, man, you, you, you're entrapped. And most of those people don't last. The people who get it, sit on it, look at it, contemplate, take it all in, and then let it come. Mm. Yeah, it's called planning your work and working your plan. Speaking of that, I was at the barber shop and um, get my hair cut. All the barbers are at. Matter of fact, I sent you the video. You were on the radio. Yeah. And um, my barber, he got to asking me, well, all the barbers in the barbershop was like, yo, because you went viral on TikTok. Our clip went viral on TikTok about how you be getting, you know, the job yeah. shit. It went viral <laughs> everywhere, man. It's on 97.9, K104, 105.7. Uh, man, man, I seen it everywhere, homie. And I know people are hitting your line trying to get the one-two about, you know, what to yeah. really do. Are you uh, charging? Are you charging people? To I wouldn't. No, I, I wouldn't. And, and, and I'm gonna say this: uh, I've helped at least five people win lawsuits since since doing this video with you. Uh, they vowed, man, I'm gonna give you something. Uh, I ain't heard from them no more. Uh, that's five that I know that won. I got another seven to eight have gotten their appointments with the EEOC. And the EOC is taking their case, so they're gonna be in, in, in uh, negotiation and mediations for something. Uh, since going viral, I've taken about three calls, cause I had I had quit helping people. Uh, I've taken about three calls, and now I'm getting people that's more disgruntled with their job. Well, what mm. about this? Well, what about <laughs> this? Man, I ain't finna just help you get nobody, motherfucker. But if you got a legitimate case. Man, I don't charge nobody, homie. Uh, because if I help one person, it really helps the other company. It helps the people on the job. I'm not advocating to get the company. If I sue a job, the conditions change. Uh, the safety practices are better. Uh, they got an eyewash station now. Uh, they're getting trained. So uh, since, since we going viral, homie, uh, my phone don't stop ringing now. My text messages are filled up. Uh, and, and so what I've done now, uh, thanks to Sean Cotton, uh, 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 there's going to be a class action lawsuit coming soon uh, against some strip clubs. <laughs> Yo, this guy's. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me, let me explain. There's a color barrier that I had no idea existed. When black girls go to work at these strip clubs, I ain't gonna say their names, but when black girls go to work at these popular strip clubs, they have a color barrier. Mm. Not only do they have a color barrier, they have a set number of black girls that they would hire. So if a dark-skinned black girl walked in my color, she can be fine in the motherfucker. They're going to say, oh, no, 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 no. Fat white girl walk in, not out of shape, not too far. Oh, come on, baby. Another medium-skinned brown girl, but if she's light yellow, kind of mixed, mulatto, ah, uh, yeah. Let's look at her hair. Is real hair, no weave? Okay, cool. So I've had some young ladies reach out to me and say, hey, the manager where I work at at this strip club, he sleep with all the girls. Is that sexual harassment? I said, what? <laughs> Is it? That's a clear case. She said, man, he sleep with everybody. He fired this one. I said, oh, you can get to him. So I reached out to attorney Kim T. Cole, the, the civil rights attorney who won the lawsuit out there in McKinney for the, the young girl with the pool party. I said, hey. I have a young, some young ladies, they, they worked at this club, this manager sleep with them, he, she got into a fight, he won't. Now she say, he say he can get her job back. 
Well, the sexual harassment that I'm describing to you guys is called quid quo pro. No company, no job, no club, no warehouse, no business. They have no defense for quid quo pro. Every company, no matter if they know about it or not, is 100% liable for quid quo pro. What, what is quid quo pro? Quid quo pro is a manager sleeping with somebody up under them, a supervisor sleeping with somebody up under them, a district manager sleeping with somebody up under them, the HR person messing with somebody because they have the power to hire a fire. So it's against federal law. These are federal laws. So when I'm getting these calls, I'm saying, well, shit, man, we can show get them off. That's a good one. So I, I got an attorney that they looking for young girls who if you've ever worked at a strip club and you had to sleep with the manager or even if you chose to, the manager cannot come on to you. Once he sleep with you, he either got to step down as a manager or he can't fire you. He can no longer be over you. Most young girls at the club don't know that. They think it's common to sleep with the manager. They think it's common to sleep with the supervisor at the warehouse. They don't know. He can't even come on to you. He can't even send you no text messages asking, can he get your number? You can get them just like that. So, you know, thanks to our video going viral, uh, I am now helping uh, quite a few young ladies that dance at these shake joints that feel like they are subject to the quid quo pro sexual harassment. And it's going to be an easy case. Man. Um. Shout out to attorney Kim T. Cole, one of the baddest civil rights lawyers uh, in the North Texas area, for real though, square bit. Do these strippers have to break you off, or is this something that you're doing? Well, I would like to ask. I would like to ask for a piece of pussy too, but I, it would it'd make me. I wouldn't be no better than the manager. Yeah, I want some pussy, but I ain't asking for it. So I just want a little small percentage. I like the money and some pussy, but no, 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 no. Uh, uh, uh. I really don't want no money. I like passing the ball, my nigga. I like being able to show people that you can beat the big guy. You can really beat him. Uh, uh, but yeah, they gonna have to give me something. Yeah, let me just quit lying. Yeah, they gotta give me something. Shit, yeah, I want some money. Money or pussy, one or two. But I prefer the money. But two of them so goddamn fine, I damn near just take the pussy and be all right without the money. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. But yeah, now nah, I take that just small percentage, that's all. Well, since we last did an interview, FBG Cash passed away. Uh he was really cool with FBG Duck, really cool with King Yellow, Lil J, famous Dex. Um, he got killed 5 a.m. in the morning in Chicago. The next day, Lil Dirk and his crew was online laughing on live, you know, how they do their back and forth thing. I interview King Yella. King Yella feels like Lil Durk is leading the youth in the wrong direction. And he calls himself the voice, but he's not voicing anything positive. What's your take on all that? Uh, none, of them, none of them is leading the youth positively. King Yella, Lil J, D DB, Juck, Cash, none of them. They're not, none of them is leading the youth positively. That's what they do, so why quit now? Don't quit now. No, no, Yella, just because you went to prison and you got a baby on the way and you trying to do better, everybody ain't got to follow that. Some people are gonna do wrong because they wanna do wrong. It's some people doing wrong but they really wanna do right. You find the ones that want to do wrong, let them do wrong. Try to grab the ones that's doing right. But Dirk is the voice. No matter who agree with it, who disagree with it, Lil Dirk is the voice. Because when he go to rapping and singing, all the babies go listen. When King Yeller go to rapping, them babies ain't really listening. When FBG cash rap, them babies ain't listening. When FBG duck rap, them babies listening. But he dead. So, 
I would have to agree with Lil Durk. He is the voice. Chicago got the torch right now, homie. It's been on the East Coast, jumped to the West Coast, came down South, moved to Atlanta, hit Miami, and God damn it, it's stuck up here now. I can't see nothing after this. I can't see no other wave of music. I can't see no other genre for black people after drill. I think drill music is it for us. I think this would be, this, this, this would have wipe us out. I think this is, I think, I think that energy is stuck up there with Chicago's drill music. And Dirk is the voice. And he make good music. He does great collaborations. He's the voice, people. Because he's sitting at the top. And when you yell down from up top, hey, boy, everybody look up. But when you yelling down from the bottom like King Yeller, hey, them niggas up top can't hear you. They can't hear you. Hey, Dirk, hey, nigga, fuck you, nigga, what up? They can't hear you. But you hear them hollering down. So let me just bring it back to the center of, of this message that I'm trying to relay. Chicago's rappers or a bunch of hurt people. They done lost this friend. They done lost that friend. They done lost this brother. This one done been shot. I just got out of jail. So they hurt and they trying to recover from the hurt. So in the process of them trying to recover, they still hurting people because hurt people hurt people. It ain't even been a year since Dirk buried his brother. He ain't had time to mourn. King Von, he ain't had time to mourn. It's like these niggas are in a real war. And we're on the outside watching the war. So we got plenty to say. Me, you, DJ Academics, even King Yellow. We got plenty to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dirk uh, Dirk is the Dirk is the face of Chicago Right now he the heart of drill music uh, He got the remote control in his hand Whatever button he pushes, it happens. We got to wait and see what he do going forward. He got a daddy. Just high ranking. If he's the voice, what voice is he hearing? Think about this, my nigga. If he's the voice... And he's still with the shit. He's still with the celebration of death and my ops. What voice is he hearing? To make him be this voice. So that means, obviously, there's some people who we can't see that encourages this kid to keep going. He's the voice. And I understand what Yella is saying. But shit, homie, when I look at it, I don't like the little nigga. But I be saying myself, homie, shit. That little nigga bigger than Tupac. He gonna be bigger than Elvis. He gonna be more powerful than John F. Kennedy was when he was president. I'm going to let y'all process that. He going to be more powerful nigga, than John F. Kennedy was when he was president. If he keep rapping. After our last interview, WAC 100 called you. Yeah. 
uh, by way of infomise. Uh, I was okay. riding in the car. I was riding in the car with my daughter. Uh, my daughter, my wife, to be exact. Uh, I got a call from Infomise. Uh, me and Infomise talk talk regularly. His exact words to me was, uh, "You busy?" And I was just leaving a a, a birthday event, uh, a birthday dinner. And I said, "No, nah, not really." I'm fit to say, "Yeah," but I said, "No, nah, not really." He said, "I got somebody that want to talk to you." He never said whack 100, and this would this would this would kind of made me upset with him. He clicked me in, and we heard whack talking. Now he on speakerphone on Bluetooth in the car. My wife say, "Is that whack 100?" I listen. I said, "Man, that is that bitch ass nigga." I hang up. I try to call Infomise back, and then I hang up again, saying they go think I'm trying to call back, and he go bridge me right in. So when I finally talked to him, I'm like, shit, goddamn, my nigga, why you wouldn't, nigga, I ain't, nigga, I don't want to talk to that nigga, homie, why you wouldn't give me a heads up and say who it was? Why would you say somebody want to talk to me? He said, man, he had a business proposition. Nigga, who want to do business with the devil? Why you want to, nah, homie, why would I want to do business? He done bit everybody. He done got, nah, homie. So I started questioning Infomise. Why would you do that, fam? Nigga, I'm in a rock call with my wife. You ain't give me no heads up or nothing. You just, you just said somebody. Any other time, you'll say, hey, man, whack, want to talk to you, man. Woo, 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 woo. So, uh, yeah, I kind of, uh, yeah, it kind of it kind of put a strain on us. So, whack 100 went to the internet saying that he didn't call me. Uh, Infomise sat there and listened to the nigga say he didn't call me, knowing he didn't call me, but he had Infomise call me. And this was right after the Jay Prince thing with him and Jay Prince. Uh, you know, they was thinking I would go side because I've spoken, I've spoken, I wouldn't say I've spoken out, but I've spoken against uh, the mob ties uh, persona, right? I've spoken saying it ain't no black mob, no motherfucking wild well, nigga. So that's my stance. So Wack thought I was going to take sides uh, against Jay Prince, uh, against Larry Hoover for whatever business proposition of business uh, and I immediately rejected it. Uh, I wouldn't even let the offer be made. Uh, once me and you say fuck you bitch ass nigga and you lie on me what kind of nigga I look like coming to sit down with a nigga who done lied and say I fuck a pastor. For me to even have a conversation with him. For me to even have a con come on homie so why would you so uh yeah, yeah, no, nah. so I really uh I was supposed to have been doing a we supposed to have been releasing a documentary uh that InfoMind's been sitting on for a year. We trying to figure out why he's sitting on it. Uh, you know, maybe he got I, I think he afraid of whack. Yeah, I think Wack 100 got him afraid. Yeah, so cause he got a lot of backlash from the first clubhouse incident, you know, when they was hot in the band Charleston White. So Wack got online and bullied him, talked to him bad. So I'm saying, man, why would you still be fucking with him, homie? That nigga bite everybody, so nah, so uh, there's nothing me and Wack 100 can do together. Nothing. Yeah. But stay away from each other or kill one another. Yeah, I remember, you know, you had something to say about Jay Prince and the whole mob ties thing. Yeah, yeah, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think they mob ties is mob ties. Uh, it's rap a lot ties, you know. Uh, but they ain't got no mob to move nothing in America. They can't persuade no judge like the real Italian mafia can. They ain't got no uh, construction contracts like the real mob ties in, in New York has with the unions and no, 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 no. They just playing gangster like the niggas playing. Uh, Jay Prince is a mogul, but he don't have a mob. And he not a mafia. Well, when you go to Houston, there's certain protocols that, you know, quote unquote celebrities checking in and things like that. I feel like a lot of people, you know, when you Make go to that Houston, white boy check in. Yeah, make the motor make make the white boy motorcycle game. Make Taylor Swift check in. Make make mm. make 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 uh uh make 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 uh Chloe Kardashian check in. Mm. Uh uh make uh what's the white boy name uh on the voice? Make every motherfucking body check in. What's the white boy name down here? Uh 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 Post Malone, make him check oh, in. Yeah. Why the niggas got to check in? I just left Houston last week. I ain't check in. Yeah, yeah, I went through Houston, went to Beaumont. Nah, I ain't check in. 
So why the, why the niggas got to check in, Mr. Prince? Mob ties? I agree. Nah, homie, take them restrictions and protocols off any nigga. We don't owe y'all nothing. Y'all people want to enjoy the entertainment. I can go hire me some white boy sheriff to patrol me, but I much rather get the black security company. But if I got to check in because they go be dropping tips on me, now nah, I go get the white boy security. You don't make them police check in. So no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, that's what I mean by I don't, I don't respect nothing like that. You just making your people check in. That ain't how the mob work. The mob make everybody pay a price. The, the judge, the police chief, uh, the police that run the beat, everybody got to pay. So that's why I don't respect it, homie. And, 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 and I hate, it's like WAC 100 done trick uh, Mr. Prince, man. Mr. Prince normally don't talk. Now, he don't have that mystique to him no more. Now he on camera explaining to this punk at yeah, so now he don't look like the big bad prince no more. He looked nervous at times. He looked like whack getting the best of him. He don't look strong no more. Cause he done let whack trick him. But I know and he know. The feds done rallied his cage with Wack, and they ain't never been able to rally his cage. Wack 100 is with the FBI. That's why Jay Prince seems so nervous, because he know that nigga with them people. He know it. That's why he seems so, like he's shaking. He know it. I know it, and Mr. Prince know it. And the FBI know we know. So, uh, I just hate, I just hate the great Prince, man. The great Mr. Prince. Uh, let that nigga trick him. Yeah. Well, since we last did an interview, FBG Cash passed away. Uh, he was really cool with FBG Duck, really cool with King Yellow, Lil J, Famous Dex. Um, he got killed 5 a.m. in the morning in Chicago. The next day, Lil Dirt and his crew was online laughing on live. You know how they do their back and forth thing. I interviewed King Yella. King Yella feels like Lil Dirk is leading the youth in the wrong direction. And he calls himself the voice, but he's not voicing anything positive. What's your take on all that? Uh, none, of them, none of them is leading the youth positively. King Yellow, Lil J, D DB, Juck, Cash, none of them. They're not, none of them is leading the youth positively. That's what they do, so why quit now? Don't quit now. No, no, Yellow, just because you went to prison and you got a baby on the way and you trying to do better. Everybody ain't got to follow that. Some people are going to do wrong because they want to do wrong. It's some people doing wrong, but they really want to do right. You find the ones that want to do wrong, let them do wrong. Try to grab the ones that's doing right. But Dirk is the voice. No matter who agree with it, who disagree with it, Lil Dirt is the voice. Because when he go to rapping and singing, all the babies go listen. When King Yellow go to rapping, them babies ain't really listening. When FBG Cash rap, them babies ain't listening. When FBG Duck rap, them babies listening. But he dead. So, I would have to agree with Lil Dirk. He is the voice. Chicago got the torch right now, homie. It's been on the East Coast, jumped to the West Coast, came down South, moved to Atlanta, hit Miami, 
And God damn it, it's stuck up here now. I can't see nothing after this. I can't see no other wave of music. I can't see no other genre for black people after drill. I think drill music is it for us. I think this would be, this, this, this would wipe us out. I think this is, I think, I think that energy is stuck up there with Chicago's drill music. And Dirk is the voice. And he make good music. He does great collaborations. He's the voice, people. Because he's sitting at the top. And when you yell down from up top, hey, boy, everybody look up. But when you yelling down from the bottom like King Yeller, hey, them <laughs> niggas up top can't hear you. They can't hear you. Hey, Dirk. Hey, nigga, walk you, nigga, walk up. They can't hear you. But you heard him hollering down. So let me just bring it back to the center of, of this message that I'm trying to relay. Chicago's rappers are a bunch of hurt people. They done lost this friend. They done lost that friend. They done lost this brother. This one done been shot. I just got out of jail. So they hurt and they trying to recover from the hurt. So in the process of them trying to recover, they still hurting people because hurt people hurt people. It ain't even been a year since Dirk buried his brother. He ain't had time to mourn. King Von, he ain't had time to mourn. It's like these niggas are in a real war. And we're on the outside watching the war. So we got plenty to say. Me, you, DJ Academics, even King Yeller. We got plenty to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dirk. Uh, Dirk is the. Dirk is the face of Chicago. Right now, he the heart of drill music. Uh, he got the remote control in his hand. Whatever button he pushes, it happens. We gotta wait and see what he do going forward. He got a daddy. Just high ranking. If he's the voice, what voice is he hearing? Think about this, my nigga. If he's the voice and he's still with the shit, he's still with the celebration of death and my ops, what voice is he hearing to make him be this voice? So that means, obviously, there's some people who we can't see that encourages this kid to keep going. He's the voice. And I understand what Yella is saying. But shit, homie, when I look at it, I don't like the little nigga. But I be saying myself, homie, shit. That little nigga bigger than Tupac. He gonna be bigger than Elvis. He gonna be more powerful than John F. Kennedy was when he was president. I'm gonna let y'all process that. He gonna be more powerful nigga, than John F. Kennedy was when he was president if he keep rapping. You and Bo Deal, uh, will y'all ever sit down together? I mean, fuck no. I would never take Bo Deal serious. For one, he got a blue check. It's hard to take a gangster nigga serious with a blue check. He got a blue check on Instagram and Facebook. It's hard to take him serious. Then, 
I didn't know who he was till he spoke on me. Never mentioned him, never nothing till he spoke on me. And he didn't speak on me in the highlight, which I wasn't mad. Once I found out he was a Chicago OG and he got a real reputation, then I wanted to capitalize off the fact that he a real Chicago OG with his hella fire street reputation uh, that's online talking. So I couldn't wait to disrespect him. Yeah, I couldn't wait to disrespect him. Say, look out, OG, you in my world, nigga. You ain't in the streets. Now nah, you in my world. This the internet world. This is where I thrive at. So I'm for to do you any kind of way in this world, nigga. Yeah, you can't do nothing to me over here. So you just keep being the OG nigga you is in the streets. But you a weenie online. So that's what I wanted to prove. So once I let, once an old nigga like him let me trick him, See, I be expecting to do this with the young niggas, the 20-year-olds and the 30-year-olds. When I meet these niggas my age and older and they going back and forth with me knowing the entertainment game, come on, homie. Get your old ass out the way. You playing for likes and views just like me, old ass nigga. That's why he went and put on his shirt that says he was 1986 boxing champ. Went and got the punching doll and put my face on it and did that old slow ass turn like this here. Boom! Man, them slow ass punches, they might be powerful and hard. They too slow, old nigga. Yeah, yeah, you ain't got no calisthenics, none of that there. Now nah, I'm on that bicycle every day. I can damn near do the splits. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, I'm, I'm talking, I'm, I'm saying, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, no, I never sit down with that nigga. But what he not telling y'all is, Mama Duck. Man, what's up with your boy, man? Tell him I ain't got no problem. They See, they be pleading. It's King Yellow, the same thing. Come on, Mama Duck, man. Tell your boy, man, woo-woo. Man, I'll, they pleading with Mama Duck. But get online and go to woo-woo. So a lot of time when y'all see me pull back, it's Charged, and you know I love you. Them my, it's Mama <laughs> Duck done called me. And I love Mama Duck to death. So if she calls, I say, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, Mama Duck. That's my P. He really good. I'm going to put it, Charles. He really cool people, Charles. So, yeah, so a lot of so, uh, a lot of times, homie, I want these niggas to understand. I'm on here bullshitting. Nigga, why you taking me serious? Nigga, I'm putting the gun to the phone. Nigga, I'm trying to get into Hollywood. I'm reenacting pre President's Day. I'm doing all kind of shit, my nigga. It's called content creation. Uh... And once I saw, man, once I saw them movie checks, them murder pain movie checks, them Tubi television, man, when I saw them $100,000 checks these niggas getting for being in Tubi and Tubi free television, man, I'm trying to go beyond this shit, my nigga. You nigga bullshit. They getting these nigga $100,000, and it's just the first month that the movie out, homie. The second month be like $80,000. i am saying, man, we tripping chasing these YouTube shit, nigga, so... No, 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 but no, I'll never sit down with them, homie. I think they got more things going on in Chicago to be so focused and want to sit down in what Charleston is saying online. I think it's more yeah. things in Chicago that they can give their time, their attention, and their energy to. Because when you look at my channel, it says entertainment and comedy. None of this shit is real. None of it. Uh, they get the realness when I get to sit down with Sean Cotton and Sean Cotton asks me a question. I give you my honest opinion. Uh, I'm not only in here, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you my opinion from uh, my character standpoint, if you notice, and then I try to come back and give you my opinion as Charleston's uh, uh, reply as well. So, uh, man, I'm trying to entertain at the end of the day, my nigga, and I'm trying to become one of the greatest entertainers to ever do this shit in our millennial, in our time. Not, not to cut you off, I, I, you know, I, I watch your shit every day, and you know, I see sometimes I see stuff that I be like, damn, I don't want Charleston White to get comfortable. Like one day you was at the barber shop on live, and I'm like, what the fuck is this dude doing? Like, uh, because I want to prove to people that when you done done what I've done in real life, your people love you, homie. I dropped my location at the strip club. I All mean, it takes oh, is one hater. All it but, takes but, is one but, hater, though. But, 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 I'm surrounded by love, so who gonna let the hater get to me? Nigga from the dough man to the strippers. Say, homie, I'm talking about nigga, I, it be strippers literally sitting with their customers and a look over and see me stand up. Nah, homie, it's too much love. So I want to show people. I want to show the world. 
And if I die doing this, so be it. When I'm at Juicy's, I'm be in Oak Cliff at the after hour spot, nigga, right down, right next door to Rudy's Chicken at three or four o'clock in the morning, live. Niggas that I done talked about, the white boy Jen Lee, they used the word nigga, him and his neighborhood buddies in there on hood day. I wanna show people that nobody really wanna hurt me for what I'm saying. Not even you, who claim you will hurt me. Most are just talking. I haven't done anything. I've said something to hurt someone's feelings, but I haven't done anything to hurt nobody. Who go hurt me and I ain't hurt nobody? So I can't, you can't make me believe, nigga, I'm in danger. If I go to California, yeah, I'm in danger because of their culture. If I go to Chicago, yeah, I'm in danger because of their culture. But if right here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, your family would have to move if you'd done something to me. It, look, if you had to pick, if you had, if, if, if the judge was like, Charleston, you're going, you got to go to L.A., or you gotta go to Chicago for a month. Which city would you, well, what yeah, which city would you pick? Chicago. Over Cali? Yeah. Uh couple years ago, man, I, I did something for the BDs. Uh they forever love me. Uh I sent some money up there, homie. And uh it helped a lot of people. I came across a nice little lump sum of money a few years ago. Uh, I helped people pay car notes out of Chicago. Uh, man, I've done a lot for for Chicago that people don't know don't know. Uh, but there are some parts of Chicago, homie. When I called to their neighborhood, uh, everybody get quiet. Hey, man, Charleston on the phone. Uh, Cause of what I I sent a I sent a care package up there to them niggas homie, uh, and they forever love me for it, and I love them uh, for embracing me, uh, and allowing me to help their children up there. Uh, and in return, uh, they travel around Texas, uh, they buy my product, uh, they go online and make sure they purchase T-shirts. Uh, when they in Philly, uh, they get with the real Philly niggas and let the real Philly niggas know that I'm a I'm a good one. Uh, when they in L.A. Uh, they were just in Houston last week when I was in Houston. Uh, so everywhere they go, homie, they let people know, man, he really a good nigga. Uh, and they don't tell everybody what I did. Uh, but back in Chicago, they know. Uh, so that's why I never really spoke on Chicago in the past. Uh, that's why I've always had a heart uh, for the pain of Chicago. But uh, when I saw how ugly Chicago is to black children and black mothers, uh, yeah, they can get it too. <laughs> yeah, they can get it too.